Everybody's here. Hey, yes, sir. Hey, it looks like the Brady Bunch right now, dude. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Welcome to TSM Live Show, Season 3, Episode 5. I'm your host, Tommy Zam. We have a great show for you guys. This episode is Future Skaters, Marquis Memphy. There's music by Down Again. Interview with Willie Santos. And right after this commercial break with Full Sin Wax, we're going to sit down with Marquis Memphy. You guys ready to get this show started? You're sitting on the ledge, scrolling through Instagram, and your life's passing you by. You keep procrastinating over and over again. Well, maybe I'll get the trick tomorrow. Well, maybe this weekend. No, do it right now. A filmer will work with you after work or before work. Do whatever you gotta do to get that shit. Go talk to someone right now. They out to help you. You spend all day on the phone anyhow? Why don't you make a call that's gonna help you with your future? All you gotta do is wax the ledge and make the trick. Why are you making it so complicated? It's easy. Yo, what's up, Marquise? Yo, what's good, Tommy? How you doing today, brother? All right, all right, all right. How, how was your night last night? I see the big smile on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, honestly, just hot. It was hot last yesterday out here in Cali. Oh, uh, dude. Did you get a lot of, yeah. did you get the blackout or what? Nah, not a blackout. Just it's hot. I didn't really skate yesterday. Oh, man. Like, yeah, I know. It's just, yeah, I, I, I was seeing that Cal California was getting these blackouts with the heat wave, man. I was like, damn, I'm so glad I took off for a little bit, dude. <laughs> but I, hey, I didn't go anywhere far, man. It's fucking hot here in Florida, dude. Sheesh. <laughs> That's why I'm wearing a hoodie because we make the house so, me and Markovich make the house so cold in here. It's like 68 degrees so, so we can be cold. So it's so hot outside, you know? Yep. <laughs> All, All right, right, buddy. You, you ready to get this show started? Yeah, let's get it. All right, tell us a little about you, dude. Uh, my name's Marquise Menifee. A lot of you guys know me. Um, started out in Long Beach, bounced around all over the place. Finally made it back to Long Beach. So, big journey circle brought me back to where I started. So, and and Long Beach is where you grew up at. Yeah, Long Beach is where I grew up. Went to elementary, middle school, and till tenth grade, I moved to Victorville. Um, yeah, I moved to Victorville in 10th grade, um, a lot of stuff was going on with my family, um, bouncing all over the place, so. Yeah. Yeah. And do you but, remember your first board? My first board? Yeah, I do, actually. Um, my cousin actually skated. He was older. He's probably in his mid-30s now. I haven't talked to him in a minute. Um, but yeah, he's in his mid-30s, so, um. They used to skate out in the front of the street. I couldn't leave the house. I was so young. I was so young. I couldn't. Um, I couldn't leave the house. So I would look out of the window. Yeah. See my cousin and his buddy skating, like in the street. You know what I mean? Just like skating in the street. Like it was crazy to me because I, I always grew up told, "Get out the street! Get out the street!" You know. And I'm seeing my cousin skating freely in the middle of the street. I'm like, man, that's cool, that's cool. And then eventually they got older and they got over it. And he left his skateboard at the house. And here I am. We always had the Tony Hawk game, so I already knew what burials and, you know, the tricks were. Yeah. So I picked up his board. He left at the house and just started pushing around on it and just picked it up from there. He's, he's stoked to this day. He's seen he's still skating. Yeah, just from it starting like that, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> he was so young, seeing them skate, and he, he he's pretty stoked though. Last time I talked to him, he was stoked that I was still skating. So, oh yeah, dude. yeah. So he's like, so, so he's like my big cousin's killing it, huh? Yeah, so pretty much my big cousin Jerome Menifee. Yeah. What what was it like skating in Victorville? Is that where you grew uh, up skating, right? Nah, I grew up skating in Long Beach from. Uh, I started, I picked it up, that was maybe like elementary school around fourth, fifth grade. And he, I moved to Vickerville in 2012. 
and it was different because I had to leave all my friends in Long Beach. Yeah. Um, I was still in 10th grade, so I was still in school. That kind of saved me because I went to school in Victorville, and, you know, you're going to meet everybody just because you skate, you know, the skaters yeah. who I skated. So instantly it was like, dang, who this, you know? So it was real <laughs> easy to make friends in Victorville, but the other blessing that came from going to Victorville, that's how I picked up um, riding for pharmacy. Yeah. So pharmacy is one of the biggest things you can get on in Victorville. So moving there was kind of a lesson because I met the people from pharmacy. So, and that's what really started everything with where I'm at now. So. Hell yeah. And, and like, what are your sponsors? Who are your sponsors right now? Uh, right now, uh, I ride for pharmacy, dark star, tensor trucks, on delay bearings, um, diamond, grizzly grip. Damn. Uh, I'm getting Nikes through pharmacy, the sales reps, bless him it, and giving shoes to the shop for me. So, oh yeah, I have my foot in the door over there. So, yeah, definitely take off with Nike. Uh, so the day you, you call them up and like, yo, Marquis, dude, hook me up. And they send you a uh, it's, it's just the, it's just the sales rep. It's not oh, okay. Like, it's not like Scuba Steve or Mike Sinclair right now, but yeah. you know that's your foot in the door. I, I thought I thought maybe you had the black card. You just like, yo, Marquis, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so um, other than that, I got um, also Skate Life Supply. That's one of my buddies. He. He's been helping me out. He paid. He helped for my Tampa trip last year, and you know, so that's another sponsor I can put down there. And that's one of my buddies. Oh yeah. I help him out. We um we make clothes together. We we did the whole shoelace thing, and you know, we're trying to bring up our own company nowadays. So, a, a times are different now. You know, you have to have your own company to get things yeah. going. Oh. So we're looking to pick up some skaters, guys. So if you guys got some footage, please send me some footage. Where, where, where can they send the footage we'll at? Get you, we'll get you some skate life supply here. <laughs> so so, so, how did you get on Dark Star? Tell us how you got on that. Uh, I got on Dark Star through, they actually tried to send me shoes first because, you know, Dark Star was through Globe. It was mm -hmm. like ran out of Dwindle and Globe was the main thing out of the building. So the rep for globe was like hey do you need any globes and you know i wasn't really down for globe you know globes are kind of you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you know so but it all worked out but so he he offered me the globes and i told him you know I, honestly i don't need shoes right now like because i was getting shoes from chris jocelyn at the time when i was over there so yeah so i didn't need shoes at the moment so i asked him like yo is there any way you can like I can get boards instead, like, and just like that, I turned down the globe and I got my first board sent to pharmacy. And then it was so hard to get to pharmacy um, that I finally hit up the my TM and I said, "Yo, you think you could send them to this address?" And that's the day where I realized it was real when those boards showed up at the house, and I was like, "Man." Dream came true. Yeah. So they sent the dark stars and. I, it's it's such a blessing because it's three companies out of one. So for riding for Dark Star, I get on delay bearings, tensor trucks, all in one box. So it's three oh, yeah. sponsors. It's three sponsors in one, pretty much. Dude, you're, you're getting like a fat box. So when your box comes in, it's like yeah. you open it up. It's like Christmas time, right? Right. Hell yeah, dude. How, how's this bearing? How's the on delay bearings doing? On delay bearings, they're good. They're good. I've popped a couple. Um, the trucks, tensors, they're improving. I've broken a couple, you know, but yeah, um, I like them. I like them. They're doing the mag lights. I just put on a pair, actually. Hang on. Oh, oh. 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 Here's my are, we, are we gonna see your setup? Tell us about your setup. <laughs> so these are those new tensors. Everybody remembers tensor back in the day when yeah. they used to be, they used to have that thing right here, but. They've upgraded. They looking like thunders now. They're pretty strong. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what wheels? Uh, these are some bones wheels. I don't have a wheel sponsor right now, so I'm freely just repping whatever I like. So you hear that out there, bones? T man, TM dude. Marquis don't have a wheel sponsor, man. Hook him up. <laughs> uh, right. Keeping my options open. Um, I've been thinking about Ghetto Child and. Oh, Ghetto Child be good, dude. 
Yeah. That'd be definitely good. That, that's some history right there, you know, mm-hmm. with Chad Muska, like the whole, basically the whole, the whole Shorties team. And yeah, stuff. so my TM for Grizzly is the Ghetto Child TM, so I could probably easily just ask him if I really wanted to. Oh, hell yeah. Dude. Yeah, you know, Twan, Diggles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's sick. And then what's your day in life like? Uh, Well, right now, you said what's my day of life like? Yeah. Um, well, if you guys tune in to my Instagram, I teach kids how to skate over in Orange County area. So I do skate lessons for 10 years old and under. And that's pretty much what I do to about two o'clock, maybe. And yeah, after that, we usually go filming. Not, it's not every day, but Greg Leska likes to, he likes to light up spots at night. So we've been doing a lot of night filming. Hell yeah, dude! That's a, that sounds like a good day. And how how can how can these kids get a hold of you to do uh, lessons and stuff like that? Uh, we have an Instagram. It's called Shredicate Academy. Okay, how'd you get involved uh, with that? Uh, I got involved in that. I was staying over with Josh. You know, um, Ginger Jesus, Josh. Uh, Ginger Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Josh. He, he Shout out to Ginger, dude. <laughs> so I was staying over with Josh and um, Costa Mesa. He had saved me and brought me out of Riverside, and yeah, I was staying there, and I would go up to Volcom, and I would see these kids doing classes, and the owner of it, Joey Lopez, he seen me um, skating, and he would say, what's up? Um, and I, I actually approached him first and said, like, I had just got fired from my job. I was doing construction, uh-huh. and it was right around COVID time, so I hit I hit him up and I said, yo, you think I can, like, I'm down. I'll teach kids, like, you know, like I've, I've always, I've always seen people do that kind of stuff until I was there. I said, I would do that, you know, like, yeah, yeah. so I seen him teaching the kids at the park and I asked him like, Hey, like, do you need any, any help? You know? And he called me two days later and said he needs some help over it. He, yeah, he's killing the game with these classes. So he was doing them at the elementary schools. We would bring the ramps to the elementary schools and, you know, every kid in the class would be like, yeah, I want to be in the skate class. <laughs> so he's, he's killing the game with that. So he was bringing them to the elementary schools. So after COVID hit, um, he has all the clients from the elementary schools calling them. We're still doing lessons to this day. You see what I mean? Yeah. So just from that and having the ramps and being able to bring them to these kids' houses for birthday parties for, you know? Yeah. That's pretty rad. I mean, that's awesome to what you're doing, you know, teaching these upcoming skaters, upcoming kids in the skateboarding and getting them involved and stuff like that. I mean, that's pretty awesome to do that, you know. Yeah. You know, I mean, it inspires you, right? Like, dude, I just taught this kid, like, two years later, four or five years later, you see the kid, like, jumping down 10 stairs, doing big spins. You're like, I taught this exactly. kid. Like, you know? <laughs> so I did it just to be able to skate now. It's just so relaxing. All I got to do is skate, you know? Yeah, yeah. Teach kids how to skate and then go skate. Oh, yeah. Day skate. It. Whole day of skating, you know? like That's the best job. <laughs> right? You can't ask for anything better than that right now. So Definitely. Yeah, just... and, and tell us about You gave us this um, exclusive video for us. Tell us a little about it. Uh, Well, that was just some footage I had. I've been sitting on footage for years. Um. It's finally this came up, and that's me giving that to you guys just so I can, you know, get rid of it. I've been sitting on it so long, but I'm working on some other projects. So, yeah, this is just a little sample of what I'm cooking up. All right, you ready to check it out? Let's do it. All right, let's check this. Let's check out Marquis' video.
You. Dude, that was sick, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That was sick. Definitely. You know, you know, one thing I, I love about your skating, Marquise, is that you do lines. Like, your lines, like, I like line skaters, you know, because you can just go through one trick, another trick, and you have, you know, in your head, you, you're like, imagining what you can do you know like one times one time tricks are awesome but i just love your skating dude it's just you're just smooth man like especially with your lines dude. like amazing you know yeah. so what so out of that whole video what part was your favorite section you know of all out of those lines like what was your favorite part that's a good question right there i got you uh, <laughs> that's a hard one uh uh maybe let me see. Let me see. Hmm. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. I like. I like the rock. Uh, what's it? The, uh, the one with the, uh, the uh, how I remember it's by the ledges with the green and white ledges. He did like. Okay. Uh, was it nose grind or gnawing cr- nose grind? He did or something. Okay. Yeah, that one was sick. Dude. That was a good line on that. Dude. Oh, that was a hot day, man. That took. Take the me line, back. The line that I really got took forever. Take take those, me back on that day, dude. Like I did, the, I did those two lines, and then what I really filmed took forever. So that was actually a, it was a good day, but super long and stressful when you can't land a line. And yeah, but no, I, I do love your skating, dude. You know, like that's what hypes me up more. Seeing people putting lines because that's a lot of skills. You know what I mean? Because you have skills. You know. Like, one time tricks are awesome, but lines are like, like I said, you just gotta go back tail, then you gotta do this and that and this and that. You know what I mean? It's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. And then um, one last question: What do you have coming up? What's something new coming up in your your life right now? Uh, skating wise, or just in general? General, like videos, anything, you know? Uh, video wise, um, I'm, I have this grizzly part that's already finished. Um, we're waiting. Uh-oh. To- it's already finished. Uh, we're waiting on just a date. Tori already told me it was supposed to come out months ago. I just I've been telling them, but you know I don't want to keep bothering them about it. But so pretty much whenever they're ready, they feel I'm ready to release. All right, Tori, we got we got to see this new video, man. Drop right. this shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Tori, right. you know, man, drop this shit. <laughs> so that's already released. I mean, finished, but. Whenever they want to release that, but other after that grizzly part, I already have footage stacking up for my Dark Star. Ooh. I don't know if we're doing a full length video again or if they're just gonna work on a video by myself. But pretty much, key to success is just stack your clips and hang on to things. So when deadlines come up, you just got your shit ready, you know. And keep your throwaway footage to the side, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> stack your stack your clips and just. When deadlines come up, you know, you, you are as ready for that deadline. <laughs> and how ready are you for the deadline? Huh? How, how ready are you for the deadline? Uh, I, they haven't gave us no deadline. That's why I just stack and just when, it, <laughs> when I do get that notice, you're ready, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And then one more question. What can you say to the upcoming skaters? What's, what, what's a good advice that you can give to them? Uh, just keep skating and learning tricks, having fun doing it. You know, just I, I study a lot of people skating and it makes me want to try. I see how they do it. Um, anything like that, just watch it and master it, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. One more truth. Just study and master yeah. it. And, and just get it good, dude. Like, hey, take it from the line dog over here, man. He got that shit. The true, he's gonna be the true upcoming line master over here. <laughs> Definitely got it, dude. Well, Marquise, hey, thanks for coming on the show, man. Um, keep on killing it, man. You know, that good positive, you know, personality you have and everything. And, uh, you know, coming up right after this commercial with uh, Bones Bearings is music, uh, down again. You ready to check them out, Marquise? Sick, hell yeah. All right, right after this commercial, let's check it out. What's going on? This is Chris Colburn, and I'm holding some Bone Swiss Precision Bearings. These bearings are very fast, they're reliable, and consistent. And they get me where I need to go. So, and with the right care, these things will last a 
lifetime. Yo, what's up down again? How's it going? How you guys doing? Doing good. So so let's introduce one, each one of you guys. So who's who? All right, I am Lenny and I handle the vocals and do some guitar writing. I'm Lucas, I do um, most of the guitar, but it kind of depends on what the band needs. It seems like I have to jump around sometimes. And uh, I'm Alex, uh, I play bass. Hell yeah, well dude, I'm hyped to have you on dude. Like, I mean, you know, I, I, I listen to y'all stuff and I'm so stoked to have you guys on. So let's get into this dude. Like tell us, you know, what you guys can talk one on one, how you want you guys want to do it. Like just, you know, tell me how you guys got together as Down Again. All right, uh, so the way Down Again ended up coming together is we used to be in another band, the three of us, that ended up kind of falling apart and we decided just the three of us wanted to move forward with a new project and uh, that was a couple of years ago now we spent a couple of years writing the album and you know we, we've already been friends for like eight years or so so yeah just one band fell apart another one came together oh yeah oh yeah and you lucas what's your what's your what's your how did that like you know, like you just found these guys and everything. Like, yeah, um, you know, I was uh, I was in another band in high school in like 2011, and a buddy, me and Lenny, had a mutual friend, and the guy was like, "Hey, these, this guy Lenny is looking for some bandmates. Do you want to jam with them?" I said, "Sure." Me and Lenny ended up linking up. Uh, we fell in love, uh, homie to homie. Like we became best friends right away. We said, kicked all the other guys out of the band. So it's just me and you. And then we ended up uh, finding Alex, and then he became our best friend too. Uh, so yeah, the three of us were in one band, and um, that band was a lot of fun. But musically, we matured. You know, that was a band with songs written in the, you know, 2012, and it just those songs didn't make sense to us now that we're you know adults in our late 20s. So we decided when we were writing new music, it's just time to go a different direction. So the three of us, you know, even though we've been a band for the last eight years, we just decided to kind of end that last band and just get a new name and start fresh. Oh, yeah. Sick, dude. Alex, yeah. Alex man. So you're the, you're the drummer, right? I got that right? No, I play bass. Oh, you play bass. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, <laughs> that was all good. Um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I had actually known Lucas because I was friends with the people he was in a band with. And then I had known Lenny because I was in another band, like way before this, that was like had a little bit of success. Um, and so we played a show with Lenny, and I just kind of met him in passing. And then we had a class together at our community college, and he was like, "Hey, man, do you want to be in this band?" And I had just gotten out of this like band, and I was like, "Nah, I'm I'm good. I don't want to be in the band. Like, I'm looking for something different." And then, like, give it a couple months, I was got that, like, itch to, like, be in a band. And I was like, hey, man, you still got that band? Is that still, is that still happening? And he was like, yeah, dude, we actually just kicked everybody out. So then I uh, I, I actually linked up with Lucas first, and we went uh, ran through a bunch of songs. And then I was just like, bro, you're in. Let's do it. And then uh, that band was fun, like they said. And then uh, kind of fell apart because uh, we all live in different areas. Lenny's in the Bay. I'm in Long Beach. And uh, Lucas is up in Reading. Uh, and then just kind of started sending each other stuff. And then Down Again kind of formed out of that, like, hey, I'm working on this. I'm working on this. All right, let's 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 do something different. Yeah. Our, our band takes both of this and being very serious. <laughs> <laughs> And so, so since yeah. all three of you guys live in different, you know, cities and stuff, so y'all, like, yeah. said, like, like you said, like, Lucas, you send one track to him, and he, he plays it out, and that's how y'all do it and everything? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. We wrote the entire album like that. Where, um, I would write either a guitar rhythm, and then I would send it to the chat, and then Lenny would write vocals or guitar lead, and then Alex would write bass, and it was all you know, literally something a thousand of miles. Because there was a time when I lived in Georgia, so sending it from Georgia to Cali, and just, that's how we had to do it. Dude, that's fucking awesome, dude. And and who's who's the skateboarder in it? All three of you guys. So yeah, 
Uh, we all have been skating, you know, a long, long time. Uh, Alex is mostly a surfer, but yeah, hey, it's skating group. But uh, yeah, me and Lenny have been skating our whole lives. Alex skates a little bit. He surfs mostly. That's awesome. And and so you guys gave us a song. Tell about the song that we're going to be listening to. Uh, are we listening to Dead Rose first? Yes, sir. Okay, so Dead Rose is one of the ones that um, I wrote. And, I mean, it's probably too much to go into in depth. And I could talk about that song for hours. But it's just a, basically a song about myself and how I view myself in my relationship with my wife. Um, he's basically an angel that I would never deserve. And the song's about how I feel about that. So. That's awesome. And, and, and Lenny, so... You ready to check this out? You guys ready? Hell yeah, let's do it. All right, let's, let's jam out, dude. Down again. <laughs> on the floor a bed of thorns is all that's left don't get too close don't get too close
Did I sit? Did I sit? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, gotta, I gotta get the VIP for the next con concert where we get out of this crazy chaos, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. That's so sick, dude. That was such a good out. So, dude, that, that was sick, dude. That was awesome. Thanks, man. So Thanks. Hyped on shout, out to my, uh, shout out to my homie Joe for helping us out on guitar for the live performance. Yeah, definitely. And so what what you guys coming up? What's coming up next with you guys? Like I know we're in this crazy chaos right now. And do you guys have anything planned for the future or anything outside this chaos? Or are y'all guys sitting back and waiting to see what happens? Uh we're definitely keeping busy. We got a couple things. We're working on some new merch, some different things for our uh, online store. And then uh then no busy writing new music. So we're hopefully gonna do some some type of live studio performance again maybe like a, a longer one though not a couple songs like a full set and then we definitely want to get in and start recording some new music soon that's awesome that's awesome man. well dude thanks so much for being on the show and dude keep on doing what you're doing man like you guys can absolutely thanks for having us man i i feel like i suck at music playing music but i feel like going out there and jamming on the bass dude hell yeah <laughs> hey, man. I, I might go hit up like like Walmart and go play the other bay if they have a place. Hell yeah. <laughs> but thanks so much for being on the show, guys. You guys killed it. You know, and one last thing, where can people find you guys? Where where can they buy get your music? Where can they find you on social media? Can you you know let me let the audience know where they can find you guys? Yeah, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It's Down Again Band, so it's super easy. We're on Spotify, Apple Music, every streaming service under the sun. And uh, got an official music video on YouTube. If you want to be able to find everything, if you just go to downagainband.com, we have it all listed out on the website so you can find whatever you're looking for. Oh, hell yeah, dude. And, uh, and merch is available on downagain.com. Yeah, yeah, downagainband.com. You can buy our merch. There you go. Hear that, guys. Go check these guys out, man. These guys fucking rock, dude. Like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you. Well, we're well, coming up right after this commercial with Ever Shoelace. Um, as we're going to sit down with Willie Santos. You guys ready to listen to Willie? Hell yeah. Hey, Willie. Hi, guys. Let's check out this commercial. What is this? I don't know his secret. I don't know his secret, honestly. I just want to hang to spray something on it. It's like a lacquer. It looks strong as hell. Bro, look. Bro, feel him. Yo, feel this. What's up, Willie? Greetings, guys. <laughs> so how's everything going, Willie? Everything's well out here. It's just, uh, you know, just trying to beat the heat. Yeah, the you guys heat wave got a, out here in Southern California. Yeah, you guys got a blackout right now, don't y'all? Oh, if, if we did, then we wouldn't be connected right now. <laughs> Hey, I like your background. Tell me about your background back there, dude. Oh, it's just a couple skateboards. <laughs> <laughs> just a couple skateboards. Yeah. <laughs> you can see that. Dude, that's so rad, dude. It, it, it's from like uh, 1991, I think it is. Somewhere over there on the corner. Yep. And then majority of it is a birdhouse, of course. Yeah, definitely. And then there's a workshop. Yeah. yeah. Dude, that's sick. That's sick. I'm, I'm probably missing like uh, eight or 10 decks through the years, that, especially in the early 90s. Um, I'd go on tour, set up a board that I was going to keep, then came back and then it's all gone. <laughs> Were well, you ready to get into this? Ready to get to this interview? Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, tell us, you know, I mean, we, we know who you are, but I mean, like, but some people that who don't know who you are, tell us a little about you. 
Well, uh, gosh, I've been skating for a really, really long time. I'm uh, turning 45 this year in October. Uh, my first uh, board sponsor was Gordon and Smith. Um, I think I got sponsored in um, like seventh grade or something like that. Um, at the time, um, I was going to send my sponsor me tape to 8th Street, but I felt like, oh man, their their team back. There's no way. So the local company here was GNS, and I sent the tape over there. Uh, Henry Hester, who's a big time Australian legend, left the video, but handed it over to um, Chris Carter, who um, later on um, started doing work. So he, him and Mike Hill were there doing the team and graphics. And they asked me to come out and skate with them. And we, we went uh, to some local places here in San Diego. And it was basically like a tryout. So I, I skated my head out. And I got on the team. And at the time, um, like Neil Bender, um, Blaze Bluen, Sean Miller, some people as well, um, Rob Beardick, um, Dwayne Petrie. Um, Chris Markovich, of course, but I think he got on a little bit later. Um, Dan and May, all these, all these legends, man. It, it was really cool to be, be on the team. Um, um, I'm just a little kid here in San Diego. Yeah, and, and how old were you when you? And uh, how old were you when you got on there? Uh, I think I was like 13. Wow. I, I remember, uh, like one of our first trips was to the, I think it, it was in um, Arizona, the Terror State Park. It was for a, like an NSA uh, competition. And I didn't do so well in the, the street, but I made it on the mini ramp and um, made it to the finals to Reno, uh, Nevada. So I think this was like, like 1990. And going out there on the trip, um, it was just amazing. Uh, uh, first time I've seen um, Paul McKay skate, um, Mike Frazier, oh my gosh, wow. just slamming stuff to the monster, even the point shaker. <laughs> and, you know, seeing um, Rudy Johnson, Guy Mariano, Gabriel Rodriguez, and the winner coming out of that. Um, in Florida was Scott Franklin, and uh, he, he killed it in the, the NSA finals. And um, going back, thinking about that contest, uh, I remember I didn't make it in the, the street, and I I made it a goal that like, okay, I'm gonna I want to make it in the final in the street. So um, you fast forward um, to the competitions. Um, making it like top three or whatever, I ended up winning the NSA finals in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm. And I think it was that year that, um, that I turned pro. But it went out pretty fast. You know? That's awesome, dude. It's, um, and yeah, that's when I first met uh, Andrew Reynolds. And of course, like Matt Beach was killing it. And then there's so many rippers that like party out, Tristan, of course, my goodness. Fred Gall. You guys might have to take some notes, especially you guys, uh, the younger ones, uh, <laughs> and look them up on YouTube or whatnot, these guys. Yeah. And then when did you get on, when did you get on Birdhouse? What year did you get start? Like, from GS? Uh, Birdhouse, uh, well, um, when I was running for GNS, um, I was skating at a school, a local schoolyard that I go to often. School public. I won't name the name of the actual school, but Tony Hawk was there, and um, he was um, there with Steve Sherman, and they were shooting for a tracker act. And I watched the game. I've seen him before because he did a demo at the local shop in San Diego, um, and you know, it was just amazing to see him skate street because uh, you know, he would skate everything ATV. 
So I watched him skate. He did the, he did the photo. He did actually um, the five roll down the the hand reference of five zero. a track pad. And um, he was actually trying to ollie over the fence at first. I remember him trying that, but um, he didn't quite make it over. I'm sure he would have been easy with the jump at, but, um So yeah, so after he started, uh, after he skated, I, I started skating. I guess he was watching me, and um, after I was done, he, he was like, "Oh, like he gave me a card, or Steve Sherman did, and um, it's like, oh, do you want a rifle? How much of it? I kept it." Kind of, um, I never called them because I was really hyped on, on GNS. And then, um, fast forward a little bit, um, during school, I think I was in 10th grade, um, or 11th grade, and my dad, when I came back home, he's like, oh, it's a hot call. So I gave him a call, and then, um, I think it was on um, QA with Jeremy Klein. And um, at the time, uh, he didn't know what his company was going to be called, but he wanted me to be a part of it. And um, a little bit before that, the guys from GNS that I named, uh, like Chris Carter, Mike Hill, they, they started a workshop. And I was supposed to be one of the original guys to go to a workshop. But I was like, oh, this is a crazy. They're moving to Ohio. To start a new company, I even got packages. And I remember one of the packages. I was like, "Oh, cool! They gave me grip tape." And I put the grip tape on and stuck to it got stuck both sides. And like, oh my god! And I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> grip tape. But um, so yeah, um, I didn't end up going on an alien and uh, with with Birdhouse. You know, without the name um, Tony was. Everyone there were friendly, me, and then there was also, um, Steve Rocco, uh, um, Mike Janowski, Robin Lee, and they were trying to get me to go to one of their, you know, world uh, companies. They, they took me out to go eat and everything, but um, I, I just um, sat down to myself and I thought that the uh, house would be the best decision. Yeah. And, you know, I was with the house for like 20 plus years. Man, that's crazy, dude. Like, I remember, I remember seeing, I remember it was, it was a first house demo and it was at Full Walton Beach and it was at the, um, it was at the, uh, this, 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 uh, I can't remember the name of what it was called, but it was like a concrete slab and it was like you and it was, I remember, you know, I talked about it was Andrew Reynolds when he was like super, super young from lives, still living in Florida. And I don't remember oh, yeah. who else was on it. I think Jeremy Klein, but Jeremy was on the team with, with which on tour with you guys. But I remember watching you guys skate, dude. It was like amazing, especially you, man. Like watching you back in those days, like when I was growing up and going to the Birdhouse demo and watching you skate, it was like amazing, dude. It was like, whoa, that's Willie Santos. <laughs> yeah, well, was uh, Steve Barra there too? I think Steve Barra was there too. Yeah, it was like, I mean, you, you guys came to full. Yeah. It, was, it was at the, um, what was it was a, uh, now it's called Plus Skate Shop, but it was Beach Plus back in the day. Okay. Yeah, so I remember. Yeah, uh, speaking of Florida, um, my, my first trip by myself, I flew over to Pete Kelly's shop. Oh, Pete Kelly, yeah. And That's did cool. a demo there. Yeah, I think I was like 14 years old. I flew by myself. I was like kind of scared, like, oh my gosh, I'm flying by myself. So I hung out with Pete. And Shannon May met up. Well, we did a demo there, and I um, I remember there was some crazy kid uh, trying back lips on the, on a rail, like a four star rail. <laughs> and fast forward later, it was um, Amy Thomas. Oh, oh, so you were in Pensacola? That's where I. Yeah. Grew, that's where me and Markovitz grew up at in Pensacola. So you, yeah. So I think you were at. You and then after that demo, I, I went to Woodward, Pennsylvania. Mm, okay, because I think you were at the uh, Myrtle Grove. I think that was the Myrtle Grove YMCA in Pensacola. That's I think that's where you were at. We did the demo at. I think if I can. Yeah, Blue Ramps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah. PK was a good homie of, of mine. Yeah, that was so fun. Thanks. <laughs> so, so you know, so. Oh, Pete. Yeah, Pete. Yeah. So. 
so definitely so after so birdhouse so you were on birdhouse for so long and you know and, and like so much experience what's the bet what i'm and there's so many memories and so many things and, and that you've been through what one memory that you have when you're on birdhouse like something that always will stand out to you that we'll always remember when someone says birdhouse you're like boom i always remember this one thing oh man there's so many tours i mean right after graduating high school the very next day i was on uh on tour for a, for a month with uh tony steve Barra, jeremy um Christian andrew and matt beach met with, with us kind of probably coming in and out on on the trip but i think the early years was definitely fun like especially skating with um with Tony street skating, you know, oh, making um, uh, feasters. That whole, that whole time was just magical, skating with Kira and, and uh, uh, Jeremy. And, you know, the, the tricks, it's just crazy to think. Of. I mean, Jeremy, he, he does he does a no-slide nollie flip. He lands it sketchy, like, hand drag. It was just, like, mind-blowing. Mm-hmm. And then the, the stuff that um, Vera and Tony we're doing on Vert still pushing the envelope with the small wheels is just uh, ludicrous. Yeah. That's so it, yeah, that, that was a really fun time. Yeah. So, so, so that was like, like what video was that? Like, I'm trying to remember my head, like what that arrow, that was like more towards. Uh, Feasters. It was the first, that was the first birdhouse video, uh, Feasters. Okay. So um, when when Birdhouse uh, first came out, I think you get you um, they had like some kind of promo, like you send in like ten dollars, and it's it, uh, it, um, a little like lifesaver uh, candy <laughs> that had the BP logo in the video VHS. If you could know what VHS. Is. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, like I mean. I mean, just to think, like, you know, from the time you were, like, what, 12 years old, you said, 12 or 13 years old, from riding from GNS to, to going to a legendary company and then going to another legendary company, Birdhouse. I mean, that's just, that's, that's so much history. I mean, that's just so much. And sticking with Birdhouse for so long, when did you, when did you decide to, like, start moving on, like, to do your own thing? Well, you know, like the, the team's definitely gone through many, many changes. And, you know, I was one of the younger ones in the beginning. And then uh, eventually, as time goes, you're like one of the older ones. So after all, I felt like I just didn't fit anymore. So Tony met up with me. And then it was just like, like you know, I think you know, the time's done here. So my, my shop video had uh, was was closing and that's when i was like okay i'll just do workshop as a brand so now that's that's what i do yeah yeah oh yeah i did and and so i think this was maybe uh 2016 i forget yeah 2016 maybe yeah and, and how's how's the workshop doing how's everything going with that things things are well it's it's just it's hard to keep keep stock right now yeah. What's going on? Manufacturing. Everybody's um, trying to get the boards in. So I, I, there's a lot of um, online orders and shop orders that I got to fill in, but I don't have the wood just yet. But hopefully, it's coming this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, and do you feel like? I mean, you're not feel, but what's this pandemic has it, you think has it hurt a lot with the industry, hurt the industry a lot, or you think it kind of like put everything back a little bit? Well, I, I think, uh, skateboarding right now, most companies, I think they're, they're killing it. You know, it's definitely, um, a bummer with, with COVID, but a blessing for, for sales because, um, skateboarding is an individual sport. So a lot of those sports that, uh, you know, like soccer, football, basketball, mm -hmm. the, the kids are unfortunately not able to really do that together. So uh, skateboarding is one of those things that um, it's an individual sport. And I feel that like um, even um, social networks, Instagram, 
the the folks that used to skate when they were younger they they have kids and they're like oh i want to have my kids skating too so there's like a resurgence of a lot of uh dads moms uh, skating you know and it's really cool like you, you see a lot of um, folks that you haven't heard in a long time uh going out there skating and having fun and my advice is to them is to, to go easy <laughs> go easy at this <laughs> Because your mind wants to go, but um, <laughs> go easy. Yeah. Hey, yeah. And, and I see see footage of your, your kids, man. They're killing it too, man. You know, little, little juice. Oh, yeah. Man. William and Felicia, they, yeah, they, they enjoy it. They, they love to skate. They love uh, bombing down parking garages. I get scared of uh, them going down the parking garages. Like sometimes my daughter, Felicia, I'm like, oh my gosh, she. She has to run out of it. I don't know if she could run out of it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so you started. Oh, yeah, speaking of uh, workshop, uh, the, these guys are coming out right here, the, the little tech decks. Okay. Doing this promotion, but uh, pretty stoked. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, so where, where can people get those tech decks at? Uh, some skate shops uh, uh, can carry it. The other day I was at Wave Lines in San Diego, but majority of the time it's like at the uh, Target, Target or Walmart. Okay. So, yeah, and, maybe at on, on TechDeck.com, maybe there's somehow you can purchase it. I don't know. Yeah, and and you started a new company called uh, Couch Curbs. Tell us about this. How this all started? Oh yeah, Couch Curbs right here. Um, So it's it's a it's a parking block right there. pillow, right? Yeah, you got one right there in the bag. <laughs> so this is one of the new colorways that came out. So it's it's pretty exciting. My my buddy uh, JJ and uh, Jeremy, my partners, um, we, we we came up with this, and we're we're so excited. We we got our first collaboration dropping uh, like next week. I I, I I don't want to release a name, but I'm sure you will see it on, online here soon. That's sick, and, and so yeah, it, it's it's fun. It's really fun. I mean, so how it's it's a a parking block curve. It's it's like the fundamental thing of, uh, of of skateboarding where you start, and it's just cool like to see it, like there's there's a couple of colors, so it, it, it's fun. And, and fun. where and where can people get those um, the couch curves at? Uh, locally here in San Diego, there's um, like um, the Gill carries it, um, Flappy's Garage, local skate shop, um, classic skate shop in Reno, Nevada. There's a, there's a handful, uh, we got it out there in Japan, so a lot of Japanese shops are carrying it. Um, there's a distribution in New Zealand that's um, wanting some interest. We're trying to get it out in Europe, but um, yeah, you could basically you hit up, uh, ask your local shop to Hit up Couch Curbs on um, Instagram, or you can order direct on, on the website, Couch Curbs. Oh, yeah, dude. And, you know, and like, I mean, what, you know, from, you, you're, you're just killing it, Willie. I mean, everything. There you go. See, that? that's what you do right there. <laughs> so that's why you got to get Couch Curbs, man, right here. See that? Couch Curbs. Got to have one. <laughs> But Willie, man, I, I'm so proud. Thank you. I'm so proud of you, dude. You're, you're doing an amazing job, man. And like, I mean, you have inspired so many skateboarders from my art generation and to now. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, like people still watch oh, you on thank YouTube, you. and and you know, you're, you're such amazing skater. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we're, we're you know, I might be a little bit older, like a you call me probably like a couple months older than you, but we're same age. <laughs> <laughs> But, you, but yeah, dude, I'm so proud of you, dude. Like, you know what I mean? For what you have done for skateboarding. And I personally, and I know everybody else in the world wants to say thank you for what you have done for skateboarding, man. Because, you know, skateboarding wouldn't be what it is for for skaters like you and other people and other skaters, you know, for, for inspiring us and teaching us, showing us different tricks and stuff like that. And I personally want to say thank you for what you're doing, man. Yeah, it, it's it's a trip. Like uh, you know, when when I was filming uh, BN, I was also filming um, the, the Trick Tips video that was on Transworld. John Holland and um, Ty Evans uh, helped put that together. 
And so to this day, uh, like on, on my story, or someone just messaged me like, oh, I, I learned flip tricks and grind tricks um, by watching that video. So it's pretty, it puts a great big smile on my face to see, see that happen still. That's awesome, dude. That's so rad to hear that, man. And, and Willie, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. And, you know, keep on doing what you're doing. And people, get these right here, cows curves. You got to have one in your house, man. And, and, and if you do, <laughs> Willie, where, where can they tag you at, man? Oh, on uh, on the Instagram, it's uh, uh, Couch Curbs. Couch yeah. Curbs. Yep. Or you can direct message me on uh, Willie Santo. All right. So when you get one, make sure you tag Willie. Hashtag Willie on that, dude. So that way you can post it up. And, yo, if you haven't seen his, his little clips of videos, they're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thanks show, for having Willie. me. Thank you so much, buddy. This is it. Thank you for tuning in to season three, episode five. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I personally want to say, and, and our crew want to say thank you to all our guests, Marquise, Willie, down again for coming on the show. You guys did an awesome job. Make sure you go check them out. Uh, I want to say thank you to all our sponsors, Keen Rams, Lakai, Clean Claws, uh, Full Send Wax, Lowell Farms, Beyond Meat. The list, list goes on and on. If I forgot you, apologize. But I want to say thank you so much for tuning in with us. And be ready for the next episode. I'll be dropping in September. Peace.